There's portals, there's underground vortices, advanced technologies, secret naval bases. These are just some of the many explanations. The world is filled with incredible and enigmatic locations. However, some places are best left unexplored, and the reasons behind that may make your skin crawl. This concrete is 18 inches thick, and it's sealing off some of the most hazardous material known to mankind. From an infamous cursed island to a haunting hotel you'd never want to check into, these forbidden spots have dark stories that warn travelers to stay away. Wow. Even the but trees. But the trees is making everything come soundless, like we're in like a sound room. Yeah. This is so creepy. Take, for instance, the infamous Poveglia Island in Italy, known for its grim history as a quarantine station and asylum, where countless souls are said to linger. Leave. Or consider the Stanley Hotel in Colorado, famous for its eerie hauntings and unsettling atmosphere, which has driven some guests to leave in a hurry. So prepare yourself as we delve into some of the most forbidden places you should never visit. The Elephant's Foot Chernobyl nuclear power plant in northern Ukraine is one of the most eerie places on Earth. In 1986, a catastrophic disaster crippled the plant, leaving an area of 1,600 square miles so contaminated it's considered uninhabitable for the next 20,000 years. While radiation levels have dropped enough for people to visit parts of the area, there's one spot that's strictly off-limits, a maintenance corridor under the ruined reactor. Hold on! Before we continue further, there's something I want to discuss. This image has spread controversy on the internet in recent times. Rumors have it that this is a very cursed place that whoever goes there ends up missing or found dead. Scary, right? It could be one of the forbidden places. But what do you think? Let us know in the comment. Now back to where we left off. That's where you'll find a massive blob of radioactive material known as the elephant's foot. This dangerous glob is made of corium, a mix of melted nuclear fuel and other materials from the plant. During the meltdown, it burned through more than six feet of concrete before settling in its current spot. Back when it was first discovered, the radiation from it was off the charts, giving off the same dose as 4.5 million chest x-rays every hour. Not that anyone could survive that long. Just five minutes near it would have been fatal. Yikes. Although its radiation has weakened over time, the elephant's foot is still extremely hazardous. In 2016, a massive steel and concrete structure called the New Safe Confinement was built over the reactor to keep the radiation contained and people out. Weighing nearly 40,000 tons, it makes sure all that toxic material stays put. Honestly, that's a relief. Some things are better left alone. Plague Island in the waters between Venice and Lido lies a small, eerie island with a history so grim that no one has been allowed to set foot on it since the late 1960s. This is Poveglia Island. Its story began in the 7th century when it was first settled, and its population grew steadily, until war broke out in the late 14th century. For their safety, the islanders were evacuated, and although Venice eventually won the war, Poveglia was left abandoned for centuries. In 1645, five octagonal forts were built on the island to help guard the Venetian lagoon, though only one remains today. After that, not much happened there, until the island became a checkpoint for people and goods entering Venice. Then things took a dark turn. When the plague was found on two passing ships, Povelia was transformed into a quarantine station. Over the years, more than 160,000 people with even mild plague symptoms were sent there and almost none ever left. Thousands were cremated on the island, and it's said that over half of its soil is made from human ash. But the horror didn't end with the plague. In the early 1900s, Povelia became home to a large mental asylum. Back then, mental health care was brutal, and patients were subjected to horrific treatments like lobotomies and electroshock therapy. According to local legends, a mad doctor worked at the asylum conducting twisted experiments on his patients using crude tools, most of whom didn't survive. Eventually, the hospital shut down in 1968, and the island has remained abandoned ever since. These days, the crumbling ruins are off-limits to the public, officially because they're unsafe. But many believe the real reason is far more unsettling. Poveglia is rumored to be one of the most haunted places on Earth. 
home to the restless spirits of those who suffered and died there. Even if it were open to visitors, you wouldn't catch me hopping on a boat to explore it. Gateway to Hell In 1965, Italian archaeologists exploring the ancient ruins of Hierapolis in Turkey stumbled upon something strange, a small stone arch with an opening that led to a cave just big enough for a person to stand in. The catch? The cave was spewing toxic fumes. Oh, and according to ancient beliefs, it was also a doorway to the underworld. Back in the day, the locals believed the deadly gas came from Pluto, the Greek god of the underworld, meaning the cave was thought to be a direct portal to his realm. To honor and fear this connection, they built a religious sanctuary called a Plutonian around it. The site, dating back to around 100 BC, was integrated into an open-air arena, though not much of it remains today. What's crazy is that this isn't the only one. Another Plutonian nearby has a nearly identical setup, a cave releasing toxic gas and the ruins of a temple above it. Here's the eerie part. At night, carbon dioxide gas would rise from the cave, settling on the temple floor like an invisible death trap. Animals unlucky enough to wander into the area would suffocate, and some were even thrown in as part of rituals. Yet, according to ancient sources, priests could walk into the cave and come out alive, claiming it was proof of divine protection. So how did they survive? Turns out, this phenomenon isn't supernatural at all. Both caves sit above a seismic fault in the earth, which causes cracks in the rock that leak carbon dioxide from deep below the surface. Most likely, the priests found small pockets of breathable air or just held their breath long enough to put on a good show. Even though it's not really a portal to the underworld, the gas is still dangerous today. To prevent curious tourists from wandering into harm's way, the original entrance was sealed off in 1970 and the second cave has since flooded. Honestly, it's probably for the best. No need to test your luck with an ancient gateway to hell. Ghoster Coaster if you had taken a stroll along the beach at Seaside Heights, New Jersey in late 2012, you might have spotted something eerie sticking out of the ocean, the skeletal remains of a roller coaster. But who in their right mind would build a roller coaster in the sea? Well, no one, at least not on purpose. This was the Starjet Roller Coaster, originally built on the pier back in 2002. But when Hurricane Sandy slammed into the coast in October 2012, the storm obliterated the pier, sending the entire roller coaster crashing into the water. Strangely enough, the ride itself remained mostly intact, even as the storm wreaked havoc on everything around it. Still, it was far from safe to use, unless your idea of fun involves riding rusting metal into the waves. For several months, the ghostly remains of the Starjet sat half-submerged in the ocean, becoming an unsettling reminder of the devastation the hurricane had left behind. Finally, in May 2013, the roller coaster was dismantled and hauled away. It was a smart move. Besides the obvious safety hazards of leaving a massive, twisted structure near the shore, no one wanted that haunting reminder of the storm's destruction lingering on the horizon. Willard Asylum Old mental asylums are such a common horror trope these days that you'd think they've lost their eerie allure. But that's not the case when it comes to Willard Asylum for the Chronic Insane. This Victorian-era institution, opened in 1869 in New York, has a hauntingly sad history that makes it far more than just a cliché. Back then, mental illness was poorly understood, and those struggling with it were often cast aside as undesirables. Take the asylum's very first patient, Mary wrote. She had been kept chained in a cell at a poorhouse for 10 years before arriving at Willard. Another patient was brought in inside what can only be described as a makeshift chicken crate, barely big enough to kneel in. For many, life at Willard must have seemed like an improvement. Patients were fed, clothed, bathed, given beds, and even offered simple jobs if they wished to work. The asylum grounds also featured amenities like a bowling alley and theater, and patients could move freely across much of the property. But this sense of refuge didn't last. Over the years, Willard's population swelled into the thousands, and reports of overcrowding and mistreatment began to mount. What had once been a place of care slowly deteriorated, with patients increasingly neglected. 
or worse. By the time the asylum finally closed in 1995, it was a shadow of its former self. Though guided tours were briefly offered, safety concerns led to most of the buildings being sealed off, and today the complex is off-limits to the public. Yet urban explorers who have sneaked inside claim to have experienced unsettling phenomena. Whispers in the empty halls, strange cold spots, and the lingering presence of something unseen. Could it be the spirits of those who once lived out their days behind Willard's walls, still wandering the grounds after all this time? Tunnels of Terror some places in this world are so shrouded in mystery that we still have no real clue what they were meant for, like the Erdstall tunnels. Never heard of them? Don't worry, you're not alone. Scattered across Europe, there are over 2,000 of these strange underground passages. And yet, not a single historic record mentions them. Which is weird, especially because they don't seem to serve any practical purpose. For starters, most of these tunnels are so low you'd have to crawl through on all fours, and they're extremely narrow, with sudden twists and tight corners where it'd be dangerously easy to get stuck. No wonder the majority are now closed off to the public, though I wouldn't be caught trying to wiggle my way into one of those claustrophobic holes anyway, yikes. Even stranger, the entrances can pop up anywhere, under old farmhouses, inside churches, or smack in the middle of forests. There's no clear pattern to their locations. Or is there? Historians believe the Erdstall tunnels probably date back to the Middle Ages, and most are found near old settlements. But here's the creepiest part. None of the tunnels have exits. Yep, you heard that right, no way out. Just thinking about crawling through one gives me the chills. So what could they have been used for? Some think they might have been temporary hideouts, used by locals to escape raiders or invading armies. That would explain why there's no mention of them in historical records. After all, the point of a secret refuge is to keep it secret, and making the tunnels small and hard to access would help keep them hidden too. Honestly, that theory makes a lot of sense to me, but at the end of the day, nobody really knows for sure what these tunnels were for. Do you have any better ideas? Drop your theories in the comments, because this is one mystery we're still trying to figure out. Runet Island If you ever flew over just the right spot in the North Pacific, you'd see a strange, eerie sight below. A massive concrete dome sitting on a tiny island. But trust me, you wouldn't want to land there. This is Runet Island, one of the most dangerous places on Earth. Part of the remote Eniwetok Atoll in the Marshall Islands, Runet was chosen by the U.S. government after World War II as a nuclear testing ground. Between 1948 and 1958, they conducted 43 nuclear tests here, leaving behind 85,000 cubic meters of radioactive waste, enough to make your Geiger counter scream. And here's the kicker. That waste includes plutonium-239, a substance with a half-life of 24,000 years. So what did the U.S. decide to do with all that hazardous material? They collected the waste and dumped it into a massive, 330-foot-wide bomb crater left behind by one of their tests. Then they sealed the crater with an 18-inch thick concrete lid, creating what looks like a giant UFO landed in the ocean. Problem solved, right? Not quite. See, the plan had originally included lining the entire crater with concrete, but the project was scaled back to save money. As a result, the toxic waste has been slowly seeping into the soil and surrounding environment ever since. Not ideal. The island is strictly off-limits to the public, but that hasn't stopped people from worrying, especially those living on nearby islands. After all, if the concrete dome were to crack or collapse, the impact could be catastrophic for everyone in the atoll. The U.S. Department of Energy tried to reassure everyone with a 2020 report, saying the dome is stable for now, but only for about 20 more years. Understandably, the residents of the Marshall Islands aren't feeling very comfortable. And honestly, who could blame them? Moments like this make me really grateful I wasn't born next to a nuclear test site. Forsaken Fortresses from museums to memorials, reminders of World War II can be found all over the world. But some relics look downright otherworldly, like the bizarre structures rising from Britain's Thames and Mersey rivers. These eerie, alien-like towers are the Monsel Forts, built during World War II to defend the UK from German attacks. Operated by the Royal Navy, they served as lookout points to spot air raids and prevent enemy planes from laying mines in the water. 
After the war, the forts were decommissioned, and most were left to rust away in the open seas. But not all of them faded quietly into history. Take the Shivering Sands Fort near the Thames Estuary, for example. This particular group of interconnected towers didn't just collect barnacles, it gained a reputation for its strange, sordid post-war saga. After being abandoned in 1958, the fort lay empty for years until eccentric musician Screaming Lord Such set up a pirate radio station there in 1964. The project was short-lived, though. Such lost interest, sold it to his friend Reginald Calvert, and it became known as Radio City. Things were going smoothly for Calvert, at least until June 1965, when a rival broadcaster named Oliver Smedley sent a group of men to seize control of the station in the dead of night. They demanded 5,000 euros from Calvert to get it back, but Calvert refused. Determined to sort things out, he went to Smedley's house to negotiate, only for things to take a tragic turn. A violent confrontation broke out and Calvert was fatally shot. Incredibly, Smedley was acquitted in court, and the fallout from the incident led to the government cracking down on offshore radio stations. By February 1967, Radio City was officially shut down. Today, the Shivering Sands Fort, like most of the Monsal structures, is off-limits to visitors due to safety concerns. With their decaying metal skeletons standing silently above the water, they remain a haunting reminder of their wartime purpose, and of the strange, lawless stories that followed. So much for my dream vacation. The Banished Town Tucked away in the forested hills of Connecticut lies Dudley Town, or rather what's left of it. If not for the warning signs plastered all over the area, you'd probably never even know there was once a town here. But the signs are there for a reason. The ruins of Dudley Town are said to be among the most haunted places on Earth. Let's rewind. Dudley Town was settled back in the 1740s by, you guessed it, the Dudley family. Nestled between three steep hills, the area was unusually dark, making it tough for crops to grow. Still, by the mid-1800s, the population had grown to about 26 families. But something wasn't quite right. A series of strange and unsettling events plagued the town almost from the start. First came a grisly plague just a few decades after the settlement was founded, which took the lives of many. But that was only the beginning. Odd and tragic accidents seemed to follow, from barns collapsing on residents to people being struck by lightning. And if that wasn't eerie enough, one resident swore that strange creatures came out of the woods at night. We'll never know if those creatures were real or just figments of troubled minds, but mental illness seemed unusually common here. In a town, this tiny three cases of insanity over 50 years stood out and made people wonder if something darker was at play. By the end of the 19th century, the town began to wither, its residents either moving away or meeting unfortunate ends. One of the last known residents, John Brophy, suffered perhaps the most tragic fate of all. His wife died of tuberculosis, and not long after, his two children vanished into the forest, never to be seen again. As if that weren't tragic enough, Brophy's house burned to the ground in a mysterious fire, and he fled into the woods, never to return. By 1901, Dudley Town was abandoned, with nature slowly reclaiming what was left of the settlement. But the strange stories persisted, and locals began whispering about a curse. Explorers who dared to visit the ruins have reported eerie apparitions and overwhelming feelings of dread. The area became a magnet for thrill-seekers until, in 1999, authorities closed it off to the public. But not because of ghosts or curses. Turns out, the real reason was far less supernatural. Nearby residents were just sick of ghost hunters stomping through the woods at all hours. So is Dudley Town really cursed? Or are these stories just folklore run wild? It's impossible to say for sure. But between the tragic history, unsettling events, and the way the wilderness swallowed the town hole, I can't deny. Something about this place feels off. Whether it's a genuine curse or just a series of unfortunate coincidences, one thing's for sure, I wouldn't go wandering around those woods anytime soon. The Doll House On the outskirts of Seville, there's an abandoned house that's the stuff of local nightmares. From the outside, it looks unsettling enough, but what's inside has scared villagers away for years. In April 2023, British urban explorer Ben James ventured into this eerie dwelling, and what he found was shocking. Dolls. Everywhere 
hanging from light fixtures nailed to walls and filling nearly every nook and cranny, these creepy porcelain figures were enough to send anyone running for the door. After snapping some photos, Ben couldn't shake the feeling of dread and eventually left, but not without a ton of questions. The locals filled him in on the house's tragic backstory. Apparently, a mother once lived there with her two children. After her kids tragically passed away, she spiraled into grief and began collecting dolls as a way to cope. It's a heartbreaking story, really. As the years went by, she became a recluse, rarely seen by anyone. Villagers believe she lost her grip on reality before she, too, passed away in 2017. Since then, the house has been abandoned, and whispers of a curse have surrounded it. Some locals believe the souls of her children haunt the dolls, forever trapped in their porcelain forms. Legend has it that anyone who enters the house and takes something, be it a doll or any other item, will become possessed and meet a terrible fate. Honestly, who would want to test that theory? I'll take a hard pass on the haunted porcelain dolls, thank you very much. But despite the eerie vibes, this tale is as tragic as it is creepy. Polypal Island Nestled in the middle of the Hudson River, Polypal Island is a place steeped in intrigue and tragedy, making it deserving of its own story. For years, it lay untouched, rumored to be haunted by local Native Americans. Everything changed in 1901 when Francis Bannerman, a Scottish ammunition dealer, purchased the island and set out to build a grand castle to house his extensive arsenal. The castle was a magnificent structure, and Bannerman transformed the island into a well-maintained estate. However, after Bannerman passed away in 1918, the island fell into disrepair. In August 1920, disaster struck when some of the munitions overheated and exploded, obliterating a tower and sending debris into the river. Though the island continued to be used as a munition storage site until 1950, another tragedy struck when a ferry boat carrying ammunition to the island sank during a storm. This event effectively marked the beginning of Polypel's decline, as any remaining shells and weaponry were removed. The island's fate took a darker turn in 1968 when New York State acquired it, only to face further disaster. Just a year later, a series of explosions rocked the island, leading to a massive fire that gutted the castle and left behind a charred shell. With lingering ammunition still present, the island was closed to the public, giving rise to rumors of a curse. Decades later, hope returned with the formation of the Bannerman Castle Trust, a non-profit organization committed to restoring and reopening the island to visitors. In 2004, their efforts paid off, allowing people to once again explore Polypel Island. The question now remains, has the curse been lifted? Only time will tell if this once haunted island can truly shed its dark past. Dying Station this unusual structure rising from the Caspian Sea is known as the Torpedo Factory, a remnant of Soviet ingenuity and military history. Constructed in 1939, the factory was built to support the Soviet war effort during World War II. Its location, far from the shore, posed a unique engineering challenge. To address this, engineers devised an innovative solution. They created a concrete base, drilled a 60-foot hole into the seafloor, filled it with a solid mass of stones, and then anchored the concrete structure to this makeshift foundation. At its peak, the torpedo factory played a crucial role in military operations, but as technology progressed, the surrounding waters became too shallow for effective testing of more advanced torpedoes. This shift in naval warfare rendered the facility obsolete, leading to its abandonment in 1966. Today, the once functional factory is a crumbling relic battered by the relentless waves of the Caspian Sea. While it might seem like an adventurous destination for explorers, caution is advised. Local legends suggest that live, unstable torpedoes may still be housed within its decaying walls, making it a hazardous place to visit. As tempting as it may be to explore this eerie structure, it's best to keep a safe distance from this forgotten piece of military history. The Doomed Island Holland Island in Maryland once stood as a vibrant community with nearly 360 residents and over 70 buildings by 1910. However, this lively settlement faced an impending doom due to its geographical makeup. Formed primarily of soft clay and silt, rather than solid rock, the island became increasingly vulnerable to erosion over time. 
By 1914, the effects of wind and tide were visibly taking their toll on the island's west side. Despite the residents' best efforts to combat the encroaching erosion, such as building barriers and reinforcing the shoreline, nature proved relentless. The situation worsened in 1918, when a powerful tropical storm wreaked havoc, damaging key structures like the church and forcing the remaining inhabitants to flee. The island continued to deteriorate, with most of its buildings gradually collapsing into the sea. Yet, one structure managed to hold on for a while longer. In 1995, former resident Stephen White bought the island for $70,000, dedicating the next 15 years to preservation efforts. He employed various methods, including constructing wooden breakwaters, utilizing sandbags, and even sinking a barge to mitigate wave impacts. Despite investing $150,000 and years of hard work, White's attempts ultimately failed to stop the relentless tide. In 2010, facing health issues, he sold the island to a venture capital group, who captured the last images of the island's final house before it succumbed to the ocean. Today, rising sea levels have completely submerged the remnants of Holland Island, leaving only sunken ruins beneath the waves. The tale of Holland Island serves as a poignant reminder of nature's power and the importance of considering environmental factors when choosing where to build a home. Hotel del Salto The Hotel del Salto in Colombia stands as a haunting testament to its turbulent history and tragic legends. Originally built as a mansion, it was converted into a hotel in 1928 but its legacy has been shadowed by sorrow since its inception. Local folklore tells of the area's dark past, dating back to the 1500s, when indigenous people reportedly leaped from the nearby falls to escape Spanish capture. According to legend, they would transform into eagles mid-fall, soaring away instead of meeting a grim fate. While the transformation aspect seems improbable, the tales of despair persisted into the 20th century. As a hotel, Del Salto quickly gained a reputation for tragedy. Visitors allegedly began to check out in a most unsettling manner, leading to rumors of hauntings. Guests reported seeing apparitions and hearing voices in an unknown tongue, and one patron was said to have been driven to madness. The atmosphere of dread coupled with the economic hardships of the Great Depression led to its decline in popularity. By the 1990s, the once thriving establishment fell into disrepair and was abandoned. However, its macabre allure attracted curious minds, and in 2013, the hotel underwent significant renovations and was repurposed into a museum. While visitors can explore the eerie building during the day, nighttime access is strictly forbidden not just due to the treacherous cliff edge, but also because of the spirits believed to roam the halls after dark. Today, the Hotel del Salto stands as a curious mix of history and legend, drawing visitors intrigued by its haunted reputation and the breathtaking views of the waterfall it overlooks. It serves as a reminder of the past and the many stories woven into its walls, inviting both admiration and trepidation from all who encounter it. And that's a wrap on our journey through some of the world's most forbidden places. While they may be fascinating, they come with stories that remind us to tread carefully. If you ever think about visiting one of these spots, remember to stay safe, maintain 10 feet of distance, and respect their histories. But I would recommend you not to visit them. We'd love to hear your thoughts, so drop a comment below and give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed this adventure. Thanks for tuning in.